I am from beyond. Listen, and all you desire will be yours. Welcome to Spider-Man and the Secret Wars. Prepare for battle. Welcome to Prattle World. I'm your host, the ever amazing, ever spectacular Spider Dan. And in this podcast, I spotlight entertainment's best kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And welcome to Shockphobia Fest, a month long celebration of all Hallow's Eve's most frightening films and comic spooks. And have we got a spooky film for you today? The coming of age werewolf tale that is Ginger Snaps. And I've brought a pair of spooky friends, the f- most frightening friends I have. Absolutely not. No, they are the best friends I could ask for at this time of year. It is Nathan Smith and Hannah Hobley. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> spooky wooky. Hi, Dan. Spooky wooky. You certainly are. You guys are looking very handsome. Um, I know everybody else can't see you, but I appreciate you putting the effort in and looking as good as you do. Oh, thank you. And you too as well, Dan. Why, thank you. Why, thank you very much. Well, we are here to discuss a doozy of a cult classic, a true cult classic that is 20 years old today and set on Halloween as well. So it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite fitting, I think, uh, that we're looking at this film. So Ginger Snaps, what did you guys think? Because I think this is your first time coming to this movie, I, I believe. Is that right? Yes, that's right, yeah. Yeah, both Ginger Snaps virgins. <laughs> uh, first time we've watched it. It won't be the last time we've watched it. This will come back for spooky seasons in years to come because it was it was brilliant it didn't disappoint well i'm so glad you liked it after the last film we reviewed i was, <laughs> yeah. I, I was like i was okay. like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna make sure i watch this again just in case i'm like i don't i don't want to just go you know we'll just watch that no i was like i think you guys were, were quite because i think i'd mentioned it or you'd mentioned it and i was like Yes, let's do that. Such a great film. Let's let's rock with that. Um, so I'm so glad we we picked this one because um because I love it. I, I saw it very early uh, when it came out. I think it was kind of a quite a cult hit on video, uh, VHS back in the day, kind of a blockbusters esque uh, kind of pick for me. But I, I loved it back then. Still love it now. I think it's so well done. It's got a great story, uh, great characters. But yeah, like as as first time first timers, like how did you how did you feel about it? You know, twenty. Two years on, does it does it still measure up? Does it age badly? Or I didn't realise that it was twenty years old. That's that's really shocked me. So actually, for twenty years ago, that's that is a state of the art low budget film because it's it's aged really well. I like the fact that everybody in it kind of looks like they should be in a new metal video, like uh, they they should be in a corn or a limp biscuit video. Well, those those were the years twenty years ago. That was the time when I was um, going through my goth days at high school. Um, so it was really... So you were a ginger or a Bridget? I was a, probably a ginger. I felt really sassy in my... Uh... <laughs> through my goth days I wasn't shy Hannah Hannah you're still very sassy to this day <laughs> it just never grew out of it <laughs> um so so you know it, it must be do you find it very kind of relatable the story being kind of that you were growing up or kind of around around a similar age at this sort of time totally relatable I mean when I got bit by a werewolf back in the day um I, I went through this the similar stages of no um, <laughs> I think what did they get what did they call it do they keep calling a, a period uh the curse yes they call it the oh. curse yeah. oh yes it's so true so you, you come on to your first you know the curse yeah and then that's it every month for the next 30 to 40 years you're gonna have a you know a few weeks each month of of misery 
where you were a werewolf and pain yeah Yeah. (laughs) i think maybe it's just a metaphor because we do turn into werewolves um yeah well i I think that's what they were kind of getting at that you know you're you know your you know emotions are all you know out there and you know it's you know it's a difficult time there's I mean, there's the obviously. I think it's. I think have being on your period and having your period is kind of linked to the kind of lunar cycle a little bit as well. I don't know, but yeah, I think that was kind of the allegory or the kind of metaphor they were going for. And I think it, I, I think it works. I think it works totally within the context of the film. I hadn't really thought about it until this moment, but yeah, maybe it's a good way for men to see this film and, and start to try to understand and sympathise um, the the struggles and the pains that we, we have as women. Yeah. Just to be clear, none of us on this podcast believe that um, womanly functions are a curse. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> so, so, um, Nathan, how did you take all the? I know you're not you're not great with the discussion of kind of blood and and that and kind of those. I am kind of- a fainter <laughs> at blood. I'm fine usually on on kind of films and TV, but not that it, the the certain aspects of blood on screen which still do make me a, a little bit queasy. I was fine on the majority. I think the word, the only bit which kind of made me a little bit green at the gills was when she was. It was you know the belly button ring. Ah. Oh. Of all of it, that was the bit that made him really squeamish because yeah. I guess it's like a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. Of course, um, yeah, it yeah. can handle like the extreme gore, but when it's just the like the tiny mundane stuff, like not for Nathan. <laughs> I I thought you'd you'd struggle with the with the school nurse bit because the way she describes the going on your yeah, uh, but yeah. I thought I thought you might. <laughs> I thought so, might. There was quite a lot of wincing in that again, not to do uh, female bodily things, absolutely, absolutely, uh, but just in blood in general. Yeah, of course, of course, it's totally natural, you know. And I think uh, what I quite what I quite like about this film is that they are so like they like they're so kind of. The positivity, everyone else is very kind of positive in the film. A lot of them are very like, you know, go out, you know, be yourself, be true to who you are, you know, accept yourself, accept your body as it is. Um, but the girls are like, oh, God, you're making me sick. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you you kind of get to the point with the, the girl. I think the girls in it, um, Catherine Isabel and Emily Perkins, I think it is, who play Bridget and Ginger or Ginger and Bridget. They are so, their chemistry is so good. Um, the writing is so good. I, I think that you're almost from the get go. You're kind of on their side. You're kind of like you're you're behind them, and you kind of go, yeah, this town is this kind of. I think they want it to be this kind of Norman Rockwellian kind of town, but it, it, like the underbelly is obviously a lot darker um, and and seedier, and obviously you've got this this beast out there that's just eating um, eating neighborhood dogs and i think that's such a great sort of introduction into it like there's the, you, you don't like get a newscast or anything like that it's just oh yeah there's a big dog kind of eating other dogs all right okay right I, i'm in the world now and and like they don't mess around part of me part of me kind of wishes that they'd started off with the with the girls doing all the death scenes a little bit like there's you know in the credits <laughs> like if that was the opening and then and then they it reveal that they're not actually dead and they're kind of like oh it's just photos and stuff and then maybe going into the the dead dog stuff um i don't know maybe that might have might have made a better opening but i know that this film was had a little trouble getting funding because of it, it was about goths it was about troubled goths it was about deaths surrounding a high school so there was it, this was not long after the kind of columbine uh, shooting so i know it did struggle to get to get funding so i can imagine maybe that maybe that maybe was the original start but then they were like no let's get to the werewolf stuff quicker come on let's do more werewolves it's a cool little universe they they build and the the relationships they have with the other people at school like like high school was horrible for me i don't know about most people but i was bloody horrible uh, oh yeah I, like, and I, I went through it too dan and yeah. i think the, the bullying aspect that they they picked up in on in the the film they they really kind of hit the nail on the head with that. It's just yeah, just and, it, and it's kind of like like obviously nowadays we've got like social media and this you know online bullying and stuff, but it, it kind of it was of that era that era that you know we grew up in that I think it kind of hits home for us a bit more because we kind of go yeah it was a bit like that actually it was kind of. That is kind of what we had or what we experienced at that time. What do you guys um, th- 
think to kind of the the rest of the kind of supporting cast that were involved in the film. Love the parents. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The parents were were good. Comedy. Yeah, I love that kind of like little subplot about their marriage not working very well, <laughs> and um, when shit hits the fan and everything like that, she's like, "Oh, we'll we'll just torch the house and." And and leave. And we'll just leave. Him. What about Dad? It's fine. It's we'll just fine. leave him here. Yeah. You just blame me. I thought that was great. Yeah. <laughs> I love. I love. Uh, it's uh, Mimi Rogers plays the mom. I think it's Pamela. I think it's she plays. And and I love. I I really love that she has. Like it's not like um, this love she has for her children is absolutely genuine. Like it's not like oh you know you're a goth. I'm not really into you being a goth. I don't really understand you. She's so supportive. So loving you know, to the point where it's, like, annoying for the girls. But, um, like, in that scene where she finds, like, the the cheerleader's fingers and realises that they've murdered a girl, she she's literally going to destroy her life just to protect her girls. Like, she will do, like you said, burn down the house. She'll, you know, she'll do whatever she can. And and she's worried because she's she's thinking that everybody would blame her anyway because she feels like outside of her home that people view these goth girls as not having you know a a kind of good family model or like that she's not disciplining them enough or something like that and she says you know they'll blame me anyway they will blame me for whatever's happened because they think it's my fault already so it doesn't really matter so I'll, i will burn down a house i'll dispose of those bodies to to protect my girls i love you so much and you know no matter what you're into or you know how you approach your lifestyle you the goth lifestyle like i still love you you know and i'll do anything for you and i think that's a really nice kind of message throughout the film that you see that she does she she doesn't stop trying does she and of course they're like of that age where they don't want anything to do with the mum or dad but she's always there just pecking away, even if they're yelling for her to get out. There's a really nice moment where um, they, they've got the body in the freezer trunk. Yeah. And Bridget needs to distract her mum from actually looking in the freezer trunk. So she says, and the first thing that comes to mind is, what do boys want? <laughs> because of course she knows that... Your mother is always ready to talk about these things, to sit you down and and have that word. And she does. She sits them both down on the settee, and they have to then sit through the talk. Uh, but it's it, it's great. That was a that was a sweet moment. One one critique I will will give to the film is I didn't feel as though the mother's story had an ending. The last time yeah. we saw her, she's she's in the party with the fingers, kind of looking for her daughters. And then I was expecting at some point for her to arrive back at the house and see it all, or just something. But you, there's there's no sort of closure for her. No, I agree. I, I agree. I, f- I feel like there's a deleted scene somewhere of her, like maybe even even if she maybe came home at the end and kind of held her daughters as they're both like there or some maybe something like that but yeah I, I agree I think there should have been some sort of, I, can't, I kind of don't mind that the dad's not really involved I think that's quite funny because he's like you know when they're discussing like periods and stuff he's, you can see him visibly being uncomfortable and and like it's you know he's like Ooh, you know but I do I do like the moment where she's like he's like the mum's like oh well, you don't understand these sort of things they're girls you don't understand and he's like yeah well why, why why all of a sudden do they care what you think she's like Shut up! <laughs> you, know, just, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. He's like, okay. Maybe, maybe there's like a deleted scene where, like, she's just getting stoned with the rest of the kids at the party, and she's like, she's not. That's why she hasn't come back home or something. Yeah, I hope she had a nice time at that party. <laughs> Somebody accidentally smokes one of the fingers. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just something like that. I, I, I'm just surprised that there's um, that there wasn't any closure to her story. Yeah, yeah. I think that that was that was a shame because I think she's one of the better kind of female characters, and I do think this is like I, I think this is what the director and the writer wanted. Uh, I think it's Karen Walton who wrote it, and she was a bit she was a bit in, unsure about writing it, but the director was like, "We need a a horror film that has you know positive female characters, female role models." And, you know, that tells a genuine story and a, and a, a proper, that has a plot and character as opposed to just being like a cheerleader that screams and gets stabbed. Um, and, and, they, and they went for it. And, and I really do see this as quite a strong kind of 
feminist kind of horror film. And I think I think horror is I know I know I've talked about it with Rasheen before, but horror the horror genre does have a lot of this kind of um positive feminine power kind of stuff going on. And I think this is one of the stronger movies that that shows that and 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 has that kind of sisterhood and that it's 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 such a nice mix of all these kind of things, like the the werewolf myth, the coming of age, the you know, puberty, the you know starting to have relationships with boys and stuff, high school, all that sort of stuff. I think it, it's kind of all comes together and mixes quite well. There's never like a bit where I feel like it's like, oh, well, they could have done more with that or they could have had something else. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an interesting kind of, uh, it's almost a bit more like a, like a vampire film really because we don't really get any like, there's not a lot of the kind of special effects kind of of a full, what we would consider a full werewolf, like a fully transformed werewolf um, until kind of just at the beginning and then right at the end. Um, but it is about that kind of metamorphosis and how it affects your personality, your emotions and your body. Um, you know, some really good kind of, the humor in it is really good as well. Like I love the bit where he's like, you know, what do you think that that thing was uh, that we run that I ran over? You know, what is, you know? She's like, oh, well, I think it's just a big dog. And he was like, yeah, how come it has a circumcised penis then? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, stuff like that. It's like it's it's brilliant. Or or the bit where um, Ginger's almost like fully transformed. She's got the Halloween makeup on. Um, she starts taking her top off, and you see all her dog nipples. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I love like stuff like that, little kind of nods, and I think the makeup is really good. Like especially around her eyes, kind of give her that kind of uh, wolf-like uh, look and everything. Um, the, I know the director, in fact, said he refused, like straight up refused to use any CGI effects, and I think that has helped the film not look as dated as it probably could have. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Yeah, because yeah. that's sort of like early noughties late 90s um cgi is just awful now isn't it yeah exactly it's, well it's, it's just aged and i think obviously yeah. it's come on leaps and bounds but i you know as i also think that opening scene with the attack um when the wolf shows itself i think it's shot really well and they shoot round again i think it's a, a lot of these kind of creature effects it's how you shoot it i don't think it's necessarily you know just just show it it's like kind of you've got to hide it a little bit or show us a bit like I like the Polaroid that kind of gets a bit of the kind of half of the wolf's yeah. face and stuff and you get the shots and and then you just see like ginger like being flung from you know side to side things like that but it's yeah it's a it's a fantastic kind of kind of film um are you guys like fans of of werewolf movies in general or um, I've seen a lot of the the, the biggies like American werewolf in in London and dog soldiers if you count that as a classic yeah. i think it's quite good yeah um but apart from that off the top of my head i'm trying to think what well, you don't get as many werewolf films compared to like your zombies or your vampires yeah i, th- I think what it is is the the effects are really hard to do and to make them look good and like convincing but i, I do quite like the howling that's a really good one in american werewolf in london uh, I quite liked one called Howl, which basically it's werewolves on a train. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's like a British movie. It's great. Highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of the underdog of horror, literally. Quite literally, yeah. werewolf films are the underdog of horror. And I think when you get a good one, you're like, oh, yes, great. This is fantastic. I want more of this. But then, you know, you get a whole slew of bad ones on top of that. Um, but yeah, I, th- I, think it, I think it works out. And I think... Again, I think it builds it quite nicely that you don't, you know, you're not getting it in the, you get in the, you get a little bit and then you get lots of the end. You get, you get your kind of, it builds slowly, but builds in a good way. And I also think you get to know the characters, like they're fully fleshed out characters as well. Like they, they're not, you know, they're not just like, he's just another victim or she's just another victim. Um, I, I tell you what, we talked around it, but we've not really talked about the plot that much. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like, yeah, that bit, that bit, that bit. Spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. Um, but yeah, so, so, what? How would you describe the plot to Ginger Snaps for the for the first time viewer if they were going to look into kind of watching this? It's about two sisters, um, uh, Ginger and Bridget, where, where Ginger is a year older, but. Um, Bridget, Bridget was moved up a year. Was moved up a year. And they've kind of like a, got a suicide pact, don't they? 
to die when they're they're 16 and they they kind of like the macabre and um enjoy the concept of death so for their um uh, school project they took take videos and pictures of them dead in different positions and in different uh, ways. Yeah, ways there is a there is a a large beast terrorizing the town who um you can see their remains of um neighborhood dogs and one day ginger finally comes on her period or she, as she refers to it the curse as they're trying to get some revenge on a local bully she is attacked by a werewolf yeah i think i think that's you've summed it up pretty well and and again we go through the various stages um you know she she grows her own tail which is uh, it's a werewolf transition a gradual transition, transition. but it is, it is good that it's a gradual transition i like that like it takes it takes a while for her to turn it's it's kind of reminds me of those kind of the old kind of Dracula vampire films where he would have to visit someone like several nights and drink their blood mm-hmm. for several nights and then they would die and then a few days after that then they would raise from the dead. It wasn't like a you're a bitten transform. You know, it's not it's not a train to Busan situation where it's just like ah, straight away. You know, an instant thing. But I, I like yeah, I like that kind of slow burn. And I I, I think th- this isn't like this isn't like a film with a huge body count either. It's not like a big like. You know, there's lots of kills and stuff. Um, it is more like a character piece. And I think that's the strength of the film. Um, and it's the acting, the performances, the writing. But yeah, um, I know I know Catherine Isabel went on to do kind of a lot. She, I think she was in a film called American Mary, where she's like a, a med student and gets up to like, but you know, behind the scenes, she's doing like um, illegal experimental surgeries on people that they're paying for. So kind of weird kind of body mod modification and stuff. Um, I'm not sure what Emily Perkins has done. I don't know if she's done that one much. One of them's in It. One of them's in the TV series. Oh, I don't know. Um, of It. Yeah, maybe yeah, Emily Perkins. Yeah. She, she's in the Tim Curry It. Hannah's looked it up. She knows. Hannah knows. She's in the know. She's in Probably the know. learning. <laughs> and what, what I really like about it is this, like, um, this kind of parallel that she's been bit by this werewolf but she still thinks all the things happen happening to her is due to her period, <laughs> which is, which is <laughs> so does. well done. Confusing times. Well, she's like, she's like, I'm growing hair in strange places, and the nurse is like, Yeah, that's normal. That's totally <laughs> normal. I love the bit where she's like, I've got a hairy chest. This is so fucked. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, do you have some of some of your favourite moments? Hannah, do you have any favourite moments within the film, like specifically where you're like, This is brilliant. Definitely the um, the freezer moment that was that was up there <laughs> for me. I liked that Ginger. It wasn't all bad. Like the transition of her turning into a werewolf actually turned into into a really like confident, sassy girl, mm-hmm. and she got the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, In more ways than one. In more in more ways than one. Yeah, it was kind of like it was almost like she's like she's she's more confident. She's more okay with her body. Um, she's you know she's she's transformed into a woman. You know she's on that journey to becoming a woman, and and she feels that this is this is all normal to have these hormones to to be angry and be aggressive all the time, or you know or to change and to flip and to all these sort of things. Yeah, I think I think that is one of the better kind of segments segments of the film where she she grabs Jason. Like initially, she's like, "No," because the girls have made a pact. They're like, "Don't you dare be normal. Don't you be a simp like everybody else. Don't you, you know?" <laughs> it just reminds me of South Park because they're like, oh, it's just them standing around going, "Oh, conformists, those bloody conformists." <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, yeah, kind of. That's kind of the, <laughs> what they're making fun of in South Park. But, but yeah, she becomes like she's, you know, she's open to things, open to new experiences, taking drugs, all that sort of stuff. But she's I slowly. When, um, they were in the car, and obviously, this like she's a virgin, and he says, "Right, you just lie back," and she's like, "No, you lie back." Yes. She, like took charge of the situation, and it didn't actually show what happened. Um, but he did live to tell the tale and went to brag to his friends afterwards that 
basically Bridget had rocked it, rock, Ginger, Ginger, Ginger. Had rocked the world. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, I, I love that she took, she took the power of the situation. She was the, she was the aggressor, uh, you know, and that's, she was like, no, I'm going to, I know what I want and I'm going to get it sort of thing. And then he comes out and he's like, he's in bits. He's got all this, like, his lad, the lads are like, really? what happened to yeah, <laughs> lads are like he's covered in blood and stuff, and he's 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 uh and he's bleeding out of out of a, out of his orifice. Um, and in this moment, you're expecting him to say like something horrific happened, but instead it was like, "Way lads, uh, yeah, I got laid." Lads, lads, lads. Yeah, exactly. It's like you don't. You don't wanna... But that, that's the thing is they're all like very you know they're very kind of worried about what other people think like teenagers would be. And I think that's, you know, you know, it's like, it's like, look, look, you're bleeding at the end of your penis. Ah, yeah, no, it's, it's my pen, my red pen leaks, my red pen leaks, <laughs> you know, all that sure. sort of stuff. And, um, and even when they're like, I love that bit where they're, they're in the kind of, is it hockey, they're playing hockey, I think. And they're, and they're, she's like, yeah, search and destroy. So they pick someone and they're like, just, they go, right, this is how she's going to die. Da, 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 and kind of list it. And she's like, I think they call her, I think they call the girl, the, the, the bully girl, like a cum bucket and stuff. I was like, they do, like, yeah. I was I like, wow. I was like, bloody hell, this is, this is pretty hardcore. Like, you're really tearing into her. So no, no wonder she kind of attacks her with a hockey stick. I was, I'd be like, yeah, kind of, kind of asked for it a little bit. <laughs> I thought that the, um, the scene at the end where the drive, driving Ginger home because they need to get a, a dose of this this injection that's gonna save her. Yeah. They've, they've got her in the back of the van and she's then you don't see werewolves throughout it. You only have tiny little glimpses. And that's the first time that you see really a werewolf in all of its form. And it's mm. it's terrifying. And when when she's let loose in the house and the hiding I thought that that was really well done. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was spooky. Yeah, it was like they, they made that like, you know, that regular house quite quite a kind of, you know, house of horrors almost. It was kind of like yeah. getting in the basement and the shooting through the walls and, you know, biting each other and stabbing each other and all that sort of stuff. Um, I, I, yeah, it was, it was quite kind of like you're on the edge of your seat kind of thing because, again, like you've, you've built up that relationship with these characters and at this point this is like, you know, you want a finale to be good. You want it to, have, you know, you know, be a huge, great big arc and an enjoyable arc for those characters, and and to kind of resolve in a in, in a way it might not be a happy ending, but you want it to resolve in a in a definitive way. And I think you really do get that with this film. It's 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 very well paced uh, as well, and and yeah, I just I just gush over it really because I just like this movie so much, and I, I always every time I kind of forget how good it is, and I come back to it and go, no, it is great really good quality stuff um and i like i like the the kind of because like with every vampire movie or every zombie movie every werewolf movie they always kind of play around with the rules and the kind of the law of you know werewolfism like you know does silver work does garlic work you know that sort of thing so i i, I quite like that it, this in this one it's it's like an std as well <laughs> yeah. the, the, you don't you don't have to bite them you don't have to do anything like that you just have sex with them and that, and that's it and i love that jason in his transformation like it he gets really bad acne yeah he does, yes. doesn't he? yeah so again it's kind of going back to that you know is it it's just puberty you know he's a bit more aggressive and a bit more you know violent it's and stuff quite funny and, because he got really bad acne and, and it looked like pieces of his face were falling off whereas it does wonders for the female. <laughs> <laughs> we all, all, all the, uh, just, you know, if you're a lad, don't get bit. If you're a girl, maybe, maybe just, just, give it, just a little, just a little nibble. Um, yeah, I, I love that. I, you know, and that, that bit, that horrific bit where he's, uh, it was, a, I, th I think there's a lot of like, there's probably a lot of young men out there would find this film very uncomfortable. I think some of the stuff in it and some of the kind of subject matter, um, you know, developing teenage young men would be a bit like, you know, so they have sex and, the, you know, he's, he's getting bad acne and, and peeing blood and stuff and, and you know, and, you know, but I think it's probably, it's probably a, thing, a good film to show, like, like you were saying at the start, Hannah, like that empathy uh, for what young women go through when they're developing, you know, maybe it's quite a good thing to show that and to kind of get that empathy across to maybe young men um, at, in that, at that age. Um, so, but also you get a cool werewolf film so you get the message wrapped in a bit of entertainment so but um, I've, I've, got, I've got a question which has been on my mind since watching it 
when Jason um, gets uh, the the curse as well, yeah. um, and is starting to develop into a werewolf, he says to Bridget, "Oh, I just want to rip small animals." And then when Bridget next sees him, there's a little boy dressed as a dog. <laughs> And he's got hold of this little kid. <laughs> so if Bridget wouldn't have turned up, he was going to rip apart and eat that child dressed as a little dog, wasn't he? Good. Wow. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, did, I didn't notice that myself. But um, but if if that's the fact, I mean, he, he says, I've had my own dog, man. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, if you're a dog lover, probably not the film for you either. Like no, if you no. if you if you don't want to see horrible things happen to dogs. Like there's a lovely like my my family had a Rottweiler and there's a, a lovely Rottweiler in this and one gets eaten and one disappears, I think. That's that's not really resolved. It's not really it's it's kind of hinted that Ginger does something with the bully's dog, the female but bully's it, dog. I think it's it, Jason. Did, I think was it Jason. Did the dog get kicked? Yeah, the dog uh, dog gets kicked in it. It's, it's yeah. not a film for dog lovers. No, absolutely not. And uh, or, or wolf lovers, you know, you're gonna lovers. No, if you're a, if you're a wolf lover, you know, it's it's gonna make you cry as well. What did what do you what, think? What? Go on. Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's just a, a, a preference, Dan. What do you prefer? Where werewolves in these modern sort of like werewolves, like in your True Bloods and your Twilight. Um, is it a little bit of a cop out that when they turn into like werewolves, the nice, beautiful huskies, like, <laughs> or do you prefer like that sort of half human, half werewolf esque feature to them? Um, so the Twilight, you know, you've you've probably heard my Twilight thoughts on Twilight. So um, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a fan of the big huskies. They weren't they were that wasn't the werewolf you know, myth I want to see. Like, this is the werewolf myth I want to see. Um, I quite like the design of werewolves where they're kind of less hairy. Like, you see more of their their, their body and their bones and their muscles, um, but there's a little less hair on them. Like, do you remember, like, um, Prisoner of Azkaban, where he turns into the werewolf? Yeah. And it's very, it's like, there's very little hair on it. I quite like seeing that. I think the, the obvious thing is you want to see lots of hair and stuff and it being very kind of fluffy. Um but I, yeah, I think it's somewhere, but I mean, I think you're talking about like the kind of the quadruped versus the kind of biped that kind of stood on two legs or stood yeah, on yeah. four legs. Um, I, I think I think a bit of both. I'm, I've not got too much of a preference. Um, it's like you want your spooky season werewolf to be hairless and terrifying and maybe your summer werewolf to be a husky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. I think so. I think so. I think that's uh, that's a kind of a fashion fashion taste, seasonal fashion change for the the old werewolves. Um, I, I watched a I watched a film a years ago, a few years ago called Silver Bullet. It's based on a Stephen King film, um, and the werewolf effects are pretty good. Like I quite like them. I know some people have issue with it, um, but in that, a werewolf kind of swings around a baseball bat. So. Um, so if you want to see that, it's it's brilliant. Stars Gary Busey as well, Nathan. So I know you're a fan. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a that's a. I think that's also set at Halloween, I believe. Yeah, I think it is. Um, so yeah, check that one out. That's a fun one. I think um, I just I I just like seeing werewolf movies. I think and and if they're convincing and if they're shot well and they look good, uh, I think that's you know that's the strength of the movie. Um, I've not seen that many ones with kind of CGI, um, but I think I might I might dip in dip my toe in a bit further into the kind of werewolf movies um kind of see if there's any other kind of ones that because again i'm a bit like you nathan i've stuck to the kind of the main ones and kind of haven't steered too far away from them um but i think nothing I might... really happened with that benencia del toro one did there I think that was they were trying to make a, a new kind of universal monsters universe which they've been trying to do for like 20 years now it's just never seems to come off um but they, apparently they're doing pretty well with the Invisible Man, so they're thinking maybe with that they might be getting closer. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. But um, but yeah, I didn't. That was by the director of Captain America, actually. That one. Um, but I didn't. I, I think I own it, but I haven't watched it. So maybe maybe one day this week I will I'll check that out. Here's an interesting fact. Do you know the school announcer? Hello, can somebody come to the principal's office, please? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Will Farrell at first. No, it is in fact Lucy Lawless from Xena Warrior Princess. Yeah, yeah. And during one of her announcements, she asked for Ted and Sam Raimi to join her in the office. Ah. 
nice nice little nod because obviously she's worked with those guys before um so yeah i thought that was i thought that was a nice little thing and it's again it's like a nice little kind of nod should we talk about all the killings did you have a favorite killing i liked i liked the um the death of the bully um because it was kind of like an accident like it um it, it wasn't kind of like um the cause of ginger like biting or ripping her apart mm. it was just something that she slipped on milk and hit her head that was the the victorious death wasn't it because she wasn't a nice person there were a few deaths that were really quite sad and you you didn't want the character to go but the death of the bully was was a satisfying one oh um, I'm, i must say i kind of wish uh, um at one of the deaths she like ripped somebody's head off <laughs> like I, it, like yeah um because the the janitor guy just kind of got bashed around oh that poor that poor janitor <laughs> he was such a nice guy and and you know ginger takes a dislike into him and he just absolutely gets him <laughs> poor guy oh i felt so bad for him because he was so nice Awful for the janitor. Felt I felt awful for the botanist who had been really helpful mm. throughout throughout all of it. He was just trying to help, and uh, I really thought. I mean, I'd kind of hoped that he'd um, get it on with Bridget. Yeah, really kind of rooting for that because th- you know th- Bridget was a real underdog, but you know for her to get together with the hottie. That's my like girl dream, though, isn't it? Like, let's end the horror with a romance. True. But I believe he's quite a bit older, and I think she's only fifteen. And I think Ginger, I think Ginger makes a comment like, "She's only fifteen, you weirdo," and he's like, "I don't see her that way. I don't." Do you know what? True, true story. It's just I know that the actress was older, that, but yeah, that's yeah. totally illegal. So I'm going to undo that. <laughs> Not rooting for that at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Well, it, to be honest, it's, it's only in like a few lines. You, like you could miss them. Like there's so much dialogue in this, you could easily miss that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought he was a quite a good character though, because he wasn't really like. Like it wasn't as predatory as most of the kind of the male characters, or as dismissive or rude or you know just horrible person. He was quite you know he's genuinely he is a drug dealer, fair enough, you know. But um, but he was genuinely helpful. He was interested. He was fascinated. He was you know he was like I'm thinking lycanthrope. You know he throws that idea out there. He's the first person to throw that idea, thinking you know that he might be a werewolf and stuff. And all the research happens, and you know, and she's watching she's watching that like fake horror movie like. Oh, the werewolf's coming for us! <laughs> you know, you get shotgun out and stuff. Um, and I, and again, I love the the play with the mythology that it's not, you know, it's not it's not like Wolf's Bane or Silver that does it. It's this other kind of holistic. Me- they're like they're like oh, the holistic medicine people say this. So I was like oh, okay, sure, holistic medicine. Um, and they and they and then they's like oh yeah, you're gonna have to inject it. And it's like oh bloody hell, it's kind of yeah, kind of is a bit extreme, but it kind of like drains it. And then, uh, and then she tries it. Bridget tries it on Jason, and he kind of just goes, "I've got, a, I've got a lesson. I've got to go." <laughs> he's got that. He's got that big syringe poking out of his neck, and he's just like, "Oh, oh stands bolt upright." He's just like, "Yeah, I'm leaving," oh, and he's just walking around, this big syringe in his neck. <laughs> and I'm, I'm wondering, as like, has that affected his memory, or you know, what, what does that do? Is, is that a permanent cure? Is that you know, a partial thing? Does he not want to eat the dog child anymore? <laughs> the dog child. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like a film all on its own. The yeah, dog, dog child. child. <laughs> Watch out for the dog child. No, not the dog child. Um, yeah. No, I, I I genuinely really really enjoyed this, and I think I think it was this kind of time, this kind of era, where we were getting those kind of you know things that were kind of making fun or shaking up the horror genre a little bit. Uh, like Scream and, you know, things like that, or, you know, parodies like Scary Movie and stuff, you know, we'd had so much horror in, you know, such a short amount of time because they just, they just spam them out a lot of the time. Um, and, but I think it was kind of, it was kind of a, a veering away from those kind of old kind of standards and kind of looking at what, you know, we, not long after this, we get the kind of torture porn stuff like Saw and um, Hostel as well. And so, then Blair Witch compared to this? I think, no, I want to say 98, I think. Yeah. So I don't think it was long after. 98, 97 maybe? I'm not sure off the top of my head. 
Um, but yeah, there was definitely, I think there was definitely a shift and more kind of character. I think you see that a lot more with now the kind of like the ghost stuff. You see a lot more kind of character based things instead of like kills, 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 blood, 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 blood. You see a lot more of that kind of gradual build and then like a, oh, there's a guy behind me, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, I genuinely think this is one of the best kind of werewolf movies ever made. Um, and again, just a strong, strong film um, in, in its own right. Um, and yeah, just full of great characters, full of great writing. Um, who else gets murdered? Let's have a think. Well, Sam, Sam the drug dealer gets murdered quite quite brutally. We don't and he, see the, uh, the head teacher get murdered, do we? No. He's just... Uh... Yeah, he's just he's just lying. To be fair, like I mean, there's a fair few times where I've gone to the headmaster's, you know, office, and I probably did imagine something like that happening, or or hoped that something like that would happen. Not that I ever would. Not that I ever would. But it's, you know, it's it's nice to imagine sometimes. It makes you feel a bit warmer inside. You know, just the odd the odd bit of imagined murder. It's it's, it's healthy. Yeah. It's a healthy thing. It's a healthy thing. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there was anybody else, but it's not. I mean, apart from the and we, we don't really know where the first werewolf comes from either. Like, there's no, it's kind of a mystery. But I like that. I like that there's no sort of, we need to find out who he was or who she was. Um, and I, I like that they just gets into it and they're dealing with their own issues. And there aren't many murders because there aren't many characters. They've just got a handful of, of good characters that are all relevant to the story. Uh, it's just a select number of people and it's really well put together. Have you seen any of the sequels, Dan? I have not. I've not, but I know the... I think Emily Perkins is in the second one uh, and I think they both come back for the third one, but it's set in, like, the 1800s or something. Yeah, I think they were filmed back-to-back, I think I was reading. Yeah, well, probably based on the proper popularity of it on video. Um, I know it was the fifth highest-grossing Canadian film of that year. That's, yeah. that's high praise. And is high praise. That is high praise. Good, good bit of uh, almost kind of almost a little bit like Canuck exploitation, sort of a little bit, I guess. Exploitation. <laughs> it's, it's probably it's probably under that umbrella somewhere. But um, but yeah, I'm just trying to see if there was anything else worth talking about uh, in it. Oh yeah, a lot of people actually compare this online um, to another film uh, with Megan Fox called Jennifer's Body. Oh yeah, um, uh, by Diablo <laughs> Cody. Could be, could be. I'm not sure. I've I've, I've never seen the film myself. But yeah, I've I've, um, I've I've heard it's good. Um, I've heard it was a little kind of a cult classic. But it's again, it's a very kind of a high school metamorphosis horror with kind of a lot of kind of feminist kind of underpinnings and things like that. Um, and kind of she, there's some predatory guys. I think she turns the tables because she becomes this demon creature thing. So um, so yeah, a lot of people kind of put them side by side because they're quite similar in kind of tone and setting and uh, characters and stuff. Because I think it's got Amanda Seyfried's in it. I think she's in it. Follow Juno, which is completely different film. (laughs) Quite, quite. Um, You know, one gives birth to a demon, you know, and one becomes a demon and one is just a bigger baby. (laughs) Just giving birth. Um, You know, we don't know how that child turned out. Could be awful child. I did. I did like the explanation for for why the um, why the werewolf finds Ginger and Bridget, because um, like Bridget's going. It just made me think of uh, Anchorman because it's going. Bears can smell the menstruation. <laughs> 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 it's just like it just made it just that's just the, the the line. I was just like, yeah, I can't hear that line and not think of Anchorman <laughs> when anybody <laughs> mentions that. Um, I also remind the tale like um, Ginger's tale reminded me of Shallow Hal as well. Ooh. It reminded me of Shallow Hall as well, yeah. Oh, was that, was, about that. that was horrible. It was yeah. really the way she was strapping it to a leg before PE. Yeah, oh, oh. God. And it's just, yeah, she's it's just really like... Weird. Well, the bit where she's like, she's like, she's looking at her sister and her, her bum's out while she's sleeping and she's just like, <gasps> you know, she's oh. looking... <laughs> pulls, pulls a pulls a pants down, sees the little waggly tail. <laughs> it's just like yeah, yeah. There's a lot of kind of. It, I mean, it's kind of like a body horror in a way. Kind of this yeah, Cronenberg esque. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of kind of Cronenbergisms. Um, but yeah, I just <laughs> just moments like that just made me just made me laugh. But I think I think that's I think that's what's good. It's like it's a perfect balance of kind of horror, you know, emotion, kind of high school drama. Um, that lo- that love, you know, at the end, we so Bridget's trapped. 
Sam Sam's been killed eventually, <clears throat> and uh, and kind of Ginger's that really good moment where. Ginger's as a werewolf is like ah, and she's like she's almost beckoning Bridget to come because she knows she's been infected as well because that was the only way Bridget could get her back to the kind of to the house and they put her in a van and she starts transforming and comes out of this almost like cocoon almost um, and and she's like she's she's telling her to kind of lap up the blood like it's like milk or something water she's like come on we're both the same you and me together forever dying together come on this is this is what we do we're sisters we're we're in this um and she starts doing it and then she's like nah can't do it can't 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 drink this blood <laughs> doesn't she vom a little bit first it's like oh, actually no there's in for me not for me. Um, and you know, it's at that point that like that Ginger then turns on her. It's like, right, okay, if we're not the same, then. And you, and you see that throughout the film. You see her kind of like Ginger just kind of snapping. Like she'll say one thing and she'll be like, "Shut up, no." You know, you, it, it's kind of it, it, it. You know, it's it's choreographed. I mean, it's kind of uh, telegraphed rather um, early on in the film that that she'll just kind of her emotions will just spin on a dime and just be like. You know, oh, I want to kill you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I want to kill you. You know, it's that sort of thing. And we see that. And then right at the end, you know, he's like Ginger's like, you know, let's die together, jumps on the knife. Well, do you, do you think she purposely jumps on the knife or do you think she just goes for it? There's, the, there's still the syringe, isn't there? Mm. She's got the knife in one hand and she's got the syringe in the other hand. And it's like she chose to go for the knife and not the syringe, which yeah. is... There's some food for thought there. Mm. See, it's a, it's a deep, deep movie. So, you know... I actually she... really want to watch the next one because I've not I've not had my closure from it yet, but that's you know not what? necessarily a bad thing with horror. You know, no, no. with these questions. Wanting more. Well, I think, I'm, I think I even might delve into it. But, you know, I've seen this one tons of times, so I think I might finally just delve into it, see, what, see how the story carries on. But, yeah, it's almost like she couldn't live with what she'd become. Because Bridget, Bridget even says, I want to live, I want to live, I choose life, I choose to live. But Ginger's like, no, no, I, I've always wanted to die. We made this promise, we've got a blood pact, you know, we cut our hands or burnt our hands together, you know, and, and did what we did. Um, and it's like, you know, I've killed all these people, can I actually live with that? Probably not. So I'll, I'll jump on the knife. And then they just kind of, you know, Bridget just holds her. Even, and hasn't even taken the cure either. She's still got the cure. So maybe maybe that was it as well. Maybe that she jumped, Ginger jumped on the knife so Bridget could cure herself. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Who knows? But then she just holds holds Bridget. Uh, Bridget holds Ginger, uh, still as a werewolf. She doesn't like transform or anything. It's just you know she's still this monster. Um, and then camera pans away and it ends on that moment. Sad. Tears galore. Yes. <laughs> drenched in tears. Drenched in tears. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think we've I think we've covered that film. I think I'm, I'm happy to uh, to end it there. Do you guys have anything else you want to say about it, or um, anything anything else you'd uh, you'd like to discuss? I just want to say I wish I would have watched it when I was a bit younger. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad I, I'm glad I watched it when I did. I think um, um, I think I, I I wish I'd seen it more. I think in that time, in the twenty years that it's been on, uh, and I think I think the the fashions and the stuff in the film, like it could have been made today. Like I think there's still, you know, there's a lot of kind of you know the goth sensibilities and dress code is not that dissimilar. Like you know, if it was made in the nineties or the or the eighties, I think or the early nineties or eighties, I think you could tell there'd be there'd be a difference. But I think it's again hasn't hasn't aged a day really it could easily be you know i think that's probably why they haven't remade it as well because i think it just it's still quite you know there's 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 nothing is aged about it and that's why it still works um yeah yeah it's been good anything else guys no no that's um go watch it if you haven't watched it yet yeah and thank you dan for encouraging us to watch it because it's it's now it's going to be a staple um spooky film what are and your I, favorites yeah it's yeah it's fab well i'm glad i'm glad I've, i brought a good film into your life um you know <laughs> after meek's cut off never again never again uh, <laughs> but that's good well um well Meek guys that movie from my life uh, yeah cut cut it right out of of my living experience um so guys um where can people find you on the social medias if they want to find you well you can find me at at nath rich smith 
And you can find me at Hannah Hobley. Easy. And is that is that Twitter, Instagram, a bit both? That's on all the platforms. That's on all the platforms. All the all those amazing platforms. Well, you can find the podcast at uh, Facebook is at Secret Balls, uh, Twitter is at Dan underscore Balls, Instagram Spider Dan Secret Balls, and the podcast is available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, and many many more. And if you'd like to donate towards the podcast, you can buy me a coffee at ko ficom forward slash Spider Dan and the Secret Balls. And don't forget to use the hashtag Prepare for Prattle. Hope everyone's enjoying their Halloween. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye.